reliable. All right, so first things first, let's talk about street epistemology. Um, I know when I first saw this you know, term, the weirdest word that popped out to me was this one on the bottom. I'm like, okay, so moon speak already, special club, what's going on here, right? Well, um, epistemology is just uh, the study of how we come to know things. It's the theory of knowledge. Um, so an example of that would be just, how do we come about under, to understand things? What's the process that we use to understand things? And then the, st the street is just a reference to an uh, informal way to approach the conversation. Like the, the key point is that's informal. There's no strict flow chart that you follow. There's no strict format. And a lot of people can contribute to this using their own styles and particular skill sets that they're particularly good at. And so when you combine those two terms together, street epistemology just becomes an informal way to ask people how they reach their conclusions. Typical questions in SE are like, how'd you figure that out? You know, how can we test that? Is that method reliable? What's a good way to reach that conclusion? These are all fantastic questions in SE because the goal of SE is to get the person to think about how they arrived at their conclusion. Um, why use SE at all? Why is that even important? Well, when I get into this technique in more detail, I can tell you that some of the major benefits is that, one, this is an entirely unbiased approach. It works for everybody, it works for any topic. It's not a tool specifically catered to atheists. It's a, cool, it's a tool that's fair use for everybody and everyone can use it. And the more people that use it, the better we can get at doing this as a group, um, as well as a culture. It's always good to ask why you know something, and it's always good to be able to realize when you don't know something, in order to get the best place to start learning about new things. Um, I also think that it works well as solo, one-on-one -on -one conversations, or it can work well in a group. Um, I use it as a self-assessment tool all the time, particularly in my work. Um, it's it's just really, really versatile and the number of people can help. So it's not just one person or a group of people, it can also help yourself as well. But I think probably the most important part is that it avoids drama. And we're gonna get into a video next, I hope the audio is good. <laughs> but but, but the, the avoiding drama is like one of the most crucial aspects of this because it keeps the conversations productive and it keeps the conversations positive. And I think we all are aware of like some of the tones of the conversations that we have with you know, particularly people who believe. I know I do. I, I know I've been uh, subject to a number of arguments, losing and winning and, but either way, I don't really feel like I win even at the end of the conversation because both people are still heated afterwards. So I want to show an example of a bunch of what it looks like when people are normally communicating with each other without utilizing SE as an approach to get there. <laughs>